Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Two Guys on Beer, coming to you from National Mechanics in Old City, Philadelphia. And uh, we have a very interesting subject for today's show uh, from the St. Fuin Brewery uh, in Belgium, in LaRoe. The LaRoe, the, well, the, I don't even know, we'll put it up there, down at the bottom, like, where it's from. But What is it? R-O-E-U-I-X? Yeah, R-O-E-U-I-X, if, uh, yeah, pronunciation not. No matter. When we drink this, we won't have to worry about pronounce it, pronoun pronouncing it. Wow. Well, we can't so, pronounce, pronounce So here, the thanks, Vince, kills. for behind the camera. I really appreciate it. So so we have from from their line their triple, the St. Fouillon's triple. And uh, this is uh, uh, in the style of a Belgian Abbey Ale, but... Yeah, I mean, it's it's a Belgian style. Ab it's a, well, an Abbey style ale. Right. Right. It's not actually from one of the seven Trappist monasteries. Um, but it's a Belgian triple, and so... Belgian style ales tend to be hoppy, or yep. excuse me, hoppy. reverse, malty. rewind, other way. Tend to be quite malty, going, um, and, and 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 sometimes spiced a little bit. Yes. You want to dance a little bit? Uh, yeah, I want to dance with you. Um, I'll basically, juice you too, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what happens is, ah, they take, um, basically the ingredients that they take to make an Abbey style ale, they take them and they triple them. They triple the, the ingredients, the amount of malt. And a lot of times they use um, what are called Belgian candy sugars, and these sugars tend to ferment a, a lot faster and, and have a certain flavor to the fermentation. And we find this a lot with uh, Belgian triples as well because they usually go through at least a second fermentation, if not a third. This, is, this has a second fermentation in bottle. And so the longer it sits sometimes, and the more sugar that's put in there, the more the yeast eats, the more carbon dioxide it gives off, and sometimes they tend to explode a little bit. Yeah, you never can tell. I mean, sometimes these, when you open them up, they'll, they'll, they'll spill over, sometimes they won't. So right. it doesn't mean that it's been shaken up or anything. It's just no. the chemical reaction inside. Now, because of the Belgian style ale, um, you get the very, uh, when the yeast ferments, you get those ester sort of flavors that brings out the spices and the, the taste of right. bananas and apricot and all that. Totally. Thing. There, there's a chemical reaction that happens in the uh, during the fermentation process that allows it to happen, and, and we should get a lot of that on the flavor profile here. Absolutely. And, you know, it's that it's that tripling of the ingredients mm. that really lends itself to um, a much heavier taste. A lot of times, uh, a lot higher in alcohol. We're at 8.5% here. So, you know, it's it's... There's more ingredients, there's more sugars, there's more for the yeast to eat on. It sits longer, it goes through two fermentations, and you know, it's gonna be a higher alcohol. A lot of people, however, judge triples um, sometimes based on how well they hide that. Yes, yes, it, it, we, we tend to judge triples sometimes on where they hide that. This does not hide anything on, on the nose. You get the spicy sort of uh, apricot sort of uh, smell off it. You're doing those bananas are big on this too. Oh, very big. And this beer is is just as good sipping in the spring as it is in right now around fall. And it is. It, it'll work out perfect for either one. The color is a little it's bit lighter than I expect from it is triple. A, it is a little bit lighter than you expect, but I think that it's it still gives that characteristic. We're getting that that, that same sort of thing. So let's give we get yeah. the flavor on the taste too. That was a horrible way to segue into that. Now with, with with beers that are higher in alcohol oh. like this, 8.5%, you're not really gonna get much head on the beer. Beer at higher alcohol but by volume, levels tend not to hold any head at all. And especially if they've been bottle conditioned too, you don't get a lot of, of head. The the flavor profile this on this bag. is very good. It does seems that they enhance some of the esters and the, the polyethyls with uh, with a spice bag. Uh, a really good, crisp little nature to it that dissipates very well on the mouth, and it hides its heat very well. Um, there, it's funny. There's as he's saying that, and, and as I'm just sort of letting this sit. The after flavor, like there's, like all that heat does kind of creep back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, oh wait, there it is. Just, right. you know, just a hint, just a hint. Um, but it does hide it pretty well. And like you said, this is something that you could definitely do in the spring as well. It doesn't have that sort of like fall kind of earthen heaviness to it. Yeah. You know, it's, it, this is a lot lighter and this is definitely those bananas and those, you know, very, it's a very fruity beer to be honest with you. Um, even though it's not a, even though it's not a traditional Abbey ale from from a Trappist brewery, it's not, uh, it's not from a Trappist brewery. But I got to give it pretty high marks. I'm putting it at 91. Um, so you're saying non-traditional? Non-traditional, yeah, for non. Um, it's actually it, it was at one point in time 
Um, an actual abbey. Yes. Um, Saint Fouline, seventh century monk who was martyred. Seventh century. There you go. <laughs> <We had laughs> who was martyred? About that um, some of his followers built a a chapel on the site of his martyrdom. In uh, the eleven hundreds, um, they turned it into the Abbey Saint Fouline after he was canonized and. Uh, it fell out of favor in the French Revolution, and it was basically destroyed. And then in 1873, the Free Art family, mm -hmm. F-R-I-A-R-T family, started brewing again in the tradition of the monks, and it's a fourth generation owned. So everything they do is sort of Abbey inspired because monks were brewing there for a long time. Yep. But um, now that said, um, uh, you know I'm going 91 too. Uh, it's this is a really neat you complex beer. The, the more the that it like. I think the more it, the more you shit on it, like, you, the more complex that flavor. Did you just gets. say the more you shit on it? Sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Dave. Don't, don't, oh, this one's going to fill that beer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is definitely is. So you know, a, a very good beer from the Walloon region of, of Belgium. I think they did a great job with this. Um, if you'd like to see more about this beer, you can always check it out uh, on Facebook. Uh, or you can check us out on Twitter. You can get it right down there. And uh, we want to let everybody know about Beer Camp. It's coming up in Philadelphia on November 13th uh, at Independence Hall at 20 North 3rd Street. I would like to see you there to Home Brewers Expo. So for two guys on beer, I'm Johnny Bellata. I'm Dave Martirana. Go enjoy some beer. Cheers. Mama, papa, look at me. Mama, papa, look at me. Look what your boy grew up to be.